time to musk up. Wow. All right, back again. Top 10 musk fragrances. I don't know what took me so long to make this. I mean, it's, it's literally in my YouTube handle. But I'm going to have a wide array of musks here. White musk, synthetic, natural, deer musk, your vegetal and bread musks. Uh, here we go. Let's see, what should I start off with? Let's start off with the deer musks. This one is more of a fresh take on deer musk, and this is Bortnikov Musk Cologne. And I don't know what it is about deer musk, but it almost acts like a, like a natural pheromone. I don't know, it's very addicting, the smell. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but man, it's so nice. It's almost got this uh, kind of furry uh, muskiness to it, but still it has this animalic touch where it's almost kind of, uh, I know it's weird to say, but like almost pissy. I know somebody watching this for the first time is like, whoa, what the heck? Uh, but yeah, so you have the citruses at the top, mainly orange I get here, maybe some lemon. And then there is a nice kind of tropical ylang ylang here that come off, uh, comes off almost banana-like. All of this is sitting on a uh, bed of deer musk, but uh, very light touches of deer musk here. And overall, it's just very fresh and tropical and one of my favorite Bortnikovs. All right, next up is another kind of artisanal uh, indie brand. And this is a release from a Lador, and this is Russian Musk. And this stuff does the same effect like uh, Musk Cologne and very addicting when you smell it. The best way to explain this is like a fire burning in the forest with a bunch of deer musk hanging around you uh, while you're roasting a marshmallow. So very resinous, green, uh, incense-y, uh, slightly sweet. I think there's some vanilla touches here uh, and a nice dose of deer musk. So very furry, musky, and uh, animalic. But like I said, in deer musk, when it's animalic, it's it's really like a turn on. It's really, really weird. I know it's just like cringy to say it sometimes, but it's fucking sexy. I can't help it, but yeah. And this stuff is like really, really strong. You need like one spray. If you look, you can kind of see, I don't know. I guess this is deer musk bits floating in there. I'll try to get the front camera so you can get more clarity, but yeah. Russian musk. Next up is i had the original here and then there was a uh, i mean i guess you can call it a flanker uh, a little bit more limited but uh royale x by zaharov uh very nice i like to call this almost like the new kind of new age mass appealing scent almost rather than blue it's kind of like yellow it's uh it has this kind of soapy body wash touches to it but not in a in a blue way like a blue de chanel or sauvage or anything like that but just very creamy sandalwood here with some nice uh clean musks but in the beginning you're gonna get that kind of effect of well effect but i think there's some cumin in here so you get those slight kind of bo touches uh in the beginning and just overall, very nice, mass appealing, kind of nice, something you can wear every day, no problem. And then I do have another option you can have if you like the cumin a little bit uh, amped up at the top. And you can get Royal X. Now, this is a decant from like a year ago, so I don't know if they changed the formula a little bit with the full bottle release. But I it, very similar. But in the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you will get uh, more hits of cumin at the top to give off this effect of kind of, uh, well, the inspiration was the smell of intercourse pretty much. And now this is like the beginning of intercourse. And this is like 30 minutes in, 40 minutes in into intercourse, if it goes that long. <laughs> Next up is in my opinion a discontinued gem especially for a designer this is very unique 
uh, and this is for him Narciso Rodriguez, the other or the toilette. And the best way to describe this is basically the smell of wet cement. So you have the musk here mixing in with that petrol uh, violet leaf in the realm of something like a Fahrenheit. And boy, this is very, very nice. I think you can still get it at a decent price if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. Narciso Rodriguez for him, Auto Toilette. All right, next up on the list is one of the more recent uh, pickups that I got maybe a few months ago, and that is Musk Panache by uh, Maison Ribachi. And this is basically a white musk mixing with this at the top i get this cardamom tea i get cardamom tea and a soapy clean auris mixing in with the musks very nice now some people i know are bothered by the amber woods in here and there's definitely a decent amount here and i typically don't overspray this because it is pretty strong but it's very enjoyable wear perfect for office wear everyday wear uh, stuff like that so that is musk panache next up on the list is a brand that's uh, gotten some hype over the years and i think it deserves it this brand uses a lot of great uh quality materials and this is from les and de mudabla and that is must Sables. now i don't know uh, i don't think there's well maybe there's some bread here i definitely get some dry vegetal musky touches here but it's mixing with this ambergris which i think is giving the animalic touches here because there is some uh some dirtiness here uh, and it's mixing in with a gorgeous natural uh orris butter here and i think eugene described it as a, a prostitute in at church <laughs> i wouldn't know but yeah, it's, there's something just very appealing about this. It's uh, It almost reminds me, the auras here reminds me of 31 Rue Cambon uh, from Chanel. And that is Musta All right, next up, this one is technically not a musk fragrance. I think it's secondary, but it's still uh, it's still there. And that is Gaiac 10 by Lalabo, and this is the Tokyo exclusive. So yes, it is overpriced, but I think this is very well made. The There is a lot of dry Gaiac wood here at the top, mixing in with some of that musk and incense. And I love that mixture here. The Lalabo aid is definitely here when it comes to this fragrance. And that's one of my favorite parts of Lalabo fragrances. There's definitely some Ambrox in here, giving off that kind of another 13 nail polish kind of vibe here but all this is done very quietly uh, it could be considered a meditative kind of scent but very very nice guy act 10 right. next up on the list is in my opinion a very underrated fragrance in this line a fragrance that is really really growing on me as well it's really going up on my list of Chanel Les Exclusives, and that is number 18 by Chanel. And this is your Embrette Musk, your vegetal uh, musk. Very dry, almost reminds me of a, like a raspberry liqueur. So there is a slight fruity touches here, and it's mixing in with that soapy clean iris. So overall, a very dry, powdery fragrance. But man, this is this is really nice. Just something you can enjoy when wearing, and it doesn't uh, scream on the skin. You don't get tired of it. Yeah, Chanel number eighteen. Right, next up on the list is a fragrance from the same line. And personally, for me, I did a full review on it, and that thing has actually got some views. I'm very surprised. Usually, single review fragrances don't get views, but nonetheless, this is probably. Well, this is my favorite white musk fragrance. I think it's best in class. I haven't tried a better white musk fragrance in my opinion. And that is 1957 by Chanel. And this is done. This is done in a way that only Chanel knows how to do. 
You got the citruses at the top. You got a wide array of white florals. I mainly get some orange blossom here. And there's just a drizzle of honey here to add um, a little bit of sweetness. Just this stuff. Uh, in my review, I said this feels like you're laying on a white cloud made out of soap suds. So very soapy, and I definitely get some kind of aldehydes, but nothing in the realm of like a number five, very uh, modern um, aldehydes in this fragrance. And yeah, this, this stuff is a love. All right, next up on the list is another Lilabo, another city exclusive. Now this one is a musk, so you probably know what I'm talking about. And personally, this is one of my favorite uh, musks musk fragrances well in general one of my favorite musk fragrances and one of my favorite fragrances uh from the city exclusives and that is musk 25. oh man so this has a bunch of different musks there's clean musks dirty musks here and they both take their turns throughout the wearing so sometimes when you smell it, it this one is definitely a shapeshifter sometimes it'll smell clean on you sometimes it'll smell a little dirty on you uh, i know there's some white florals in here as well this definitely has some touches of another 13 so i definitely get some ambroxan in here possibly some isoly super oh, gorgeous i mean this stuff just yeah like i don't really talk about compliments often but just like another 13 this will get it and this are, there's also a little bit of sweetness here. I think it might come from the from the white musk. I'm not sure. I don't know if there might be a note of vanilla in here as well. But this stuff just just feels like a again like a big fluffy white cloud. I just can't help but picture uh, a nice a sunny day with a bunch of big white fluffy clouds floating. Musk 25. And last but not least. Uh, I, you might not be surprised when you see this. I know some people say it smells like a Cinnabon. I personally don't get that. I know it does it definitely has some gourmand touches, but in my opinion, it doesn't smell edible. And I think the, because of the heavy dose of musk here, because is because of that. But uh, Musk Ravageur by Frederick Mull. And this bottle was almost damn near clear when I first got it. And I guess the vanilla in here has really changed. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, was it like two years old now, this bottle? And it's gotten really yellow, but cloves. I mean, you get hit with the cloves at the top, especially from the nozzle, but then you get this kind of uh, ambery, vanillic, benzoin, uh, incense touches here woody and of course musky the musk here comes off as a little furry and dirty as well this gives me and the reason why i think this is so addicting is because this reminds me of natural deer musk it does that same effect of just how addicting it it makes it and obviously there is no deer musk in here but the way it's blended just makes it feel like there like there is deer musk in here and really like this surprisingly enough i made a protein shake uh chocolate whey whey protein with banana uh oatmeal i put in there with almond milk and i was blending it one time and i got some on my fingers and for some reason i was reminded by musk ravageur oddly enough but yeah very nice and i understand why people really do like this all right that is my top 10 musk fragrances. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you like any of these and let me know what some of your favorite white musk fragrances or should I say musk in general. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.